Welcome, old chap. How are you feeling? You look tired. Perhaps ready to finally take the weight off your feet, eh? Those last few levels of the back rooms have really been taking a toll on your health, happiness, and sanity. Though really, what did you expect? Deciding to come to this multi-level hell just outside of Earth. But, of course, we're not here to judge. Where would be the fun in that? We're just here to guide you along your journey and document it every step of the way. And we hope you're ready for some good old-fashioned hospitality, because that's exactly what you'll find here. Welcome to Level 5, the Terror Hotel. You enter the main hall and immediately have your senses caressed by the faint smell of lavender-scented air freshener and the low, steady hum of smooth jazz. How could something that is, in theory, so incredibly relaxing also be so oddly terrifying? All the other backrooms levels have been so overtly hostile, or at least unwelcoming to human presence, but something about this place just seems to invite you in. It's made up to look like a classy hotel from the early 20th century, perhaps the 1920s or 1930s. It awakens half-formed memories of places you're not sure you'd ever actually been in your childhood, as well as a documentary you watched once on the Stanley Hotel, a centuries-old hotel in Estes Park, Colorado, that inspired Stephen King to write The Shining. And anything that reminds you of The Shining's Overlook Hotel is probably bad news. So you proceed with caution, knowing danger could be around any corner here. You quite enjoy the smooth jazz, but once or twice, you find yourself wondering if there's something else you can hear under that fine piano and saxophone. Unintelligible whispers in a language that seems equal parts familiar and alien. You find your eyes drawn to oil paintings on the wall, all portraits of what you can only assume are long-dead strangers. Such is the way of the back rooms. You wonder for a few scant moments whether the eyes of the paintings are following you. Anywhere else, this would be a crazy thing to think, but in the back rooms, anything seems to be possible. Occasionally, the whispers behind the unending flow of smooth jazz seem to get louder or quieter as you traverse the ornate halls of the hotel, marked by fine mahogany furniture, Turkish rugs on hardwood flooring, Beautiful vases brimming with flowers that should surely be long dead by now, right? This whole place seems startlingly clean compared to the rest of the back rooms. No dust, no smudges, it's perfectly pristine, as though an invisible cleaning staff is working to maintain it around the clock. You're almost lulled into a false sense of security when you feel a tap on your shoulder and pivot on your heels with an awkward stifled yelp. But all that stretches out behind you is a long, winding hallway, with not a soul in sight. Suddenly, something moves above you, and you instinctually dart out of the way. That's because the back rooms has taught you well to remain on guard at all times. And good thing, too, because the creature fluttering above you is a female death moth. You remember being told about these creatures by members of the major explorers group on other levels, and you assume, correctly we might add, that they have some kind of a hive or nest on this level. While behavior can vary from specimen to specimen when it comes to the death moths, it follows that the males of the species are relatively harmless, while the females are decidedly not. They've been known to engage with extreme aggression, especially nearby to their nests. They're also capable of spitting acid, which will really put a dent in your otherwise relatively pleasant day. You know that these creatures are best avoided at all costs, Thankfully, the death moth seems to only have eyes for a nearby lamp, much like its non-anomalous earth moth counterparts. What a relief, they're so plentiful around here. When you're confident that the death moth is gone, you quietly get up and proceed. You've got no interest in getting your face melted off today, or any other day for that matter. After so many encounters with the most horrific monsters you can imagine over the last few months, you're always alert for potential horrific threats, often hiding in plain sight. That's why, when you see a small black and white cat wandering around, you immediately expect that it will explode or grow tentacles, or actually be a lure controlled by a giant fish or spider creature hiding just outside your line of sight. Funnily enough, the last thing you expect is it to come over and start talking to you. And yet, that's exactly what it does. 
Life can be a little strange like that, friends. The cat approaches and says, Hello there, explorer. I'm Samantha. I like to frequent the Level 5 Hotel. Rather nice, isn't it? Partly out of the sheer surreality of the situation, you blindly agree. Say, you wouldn't happen to have any meat on you, she says in an oddly insistent tone that makes you think it's best to obey her. If you give me some, I'll tell you your fortune. It's a fair trade. For a moment, you worry you don't have anything on you to satisfy Samantha the talking cat. But then you remember that before coming down here, you packed a number of supplies in your backpack, including a turkey Slim Jim. It wasn't the best, but hey, it was meat. You get it out of your bag and offer it to Samantha, who eats it before replying, you're going to be offered a deal by something extremely dangerous and leaving. What a heartwarming prophecy, you think sarcastically. In light of that, all you can really do is just keep moving. Your journey continues down the expansive network of fancy corridors that make up Level 5's main hall. How could such fine traditional opulence end up feeling so incredibly unwelcoming? Now and then you notice swarms of death moths in the distance and continue making the wise choice of hiding away in the dark corners until they've passed. Occasionally you'll see dead ones on the ground, being feasted on by strange horned rat-like creatures known as death rats. It's all one big perfect ecosystem of strangeness down here. Eventually you find yourself somewhere different. There's a silver plaque next to a grand set of mahogany doors with the engraved moniker, The Beverly Room. You venture inside, hoping Beverly isn't some nightmare creature that'll immediately rip you to shreds or shake you down for more meat in exchange for vague psychic readings. But instead, you find a gorgeous network of grand ballrooms, the kind that you imagine must have hosted countless Shining-esque parties back in the day. The only notable piece of furniture in these otherwise cavernous rooms is a table covered in an assortment of esoteric items, including various drinks that you know better by now than to sample, and a half-finished game of Mahjong. There's an odd aura of evil coming off of the game board that somehow tells you that you need to stay away. The last thing you notice before putting some distance between you and the mysterious table is a paper note, scrawled quickly reading, Beware the Beast. In the back rooms, you really wish it would be more specific. You feel another tap on your shoulder and quickly turn around, expecting to see nothing but instead, against all odds, saying, Amelia Earhart, yes, that Amelia Earhart, standing behind you, looking exactly the way she did when she disappeared on that fateful and monumental flight. It turns out that many famous people who just mysteriously went missing in the past ended up inside the back rooms after an unexpected no-clip. After all, it really can happen to anyone. Before you can say a word, she puts a finger up to her lips and shushes you. There's clear fear in her eyes. Suddenly, you can hear a mysterious growling noise coming from somewhere. Honestly, it really isn't clear where it's coming from. It seems almost like it's being projected directly into your head. This, naturally, leaves you feeling a little nervous. But Amelia Earhart, who seems to know what she's doing, takes you by the hand and leads you away to a nearby hall, where the two of you hide in different dark crevices. You have the good sense to just stay put and wait as the growling gets louder and louder. But soon, it's ear-splitting, almost deafening. Part of you wants to scream just to drown it out, but you get the sense that doing so would mean instant death. That's when you see it. A huge quadrupedal mass made of multicolored pipe cleaners? <laughs> You'd laugh if it wasn't so utterly terrifying. And you're right to not make a sound, because this creature is a growler, a highly aggressive and predatory entity that hunts down any living things it can find to assimilate and devour. It uses echolocation to hunt its prey, so any noise you made would have spelled certain doom for you. The one saving grace is that growlers are phenomenally stupid, so it doesn't spend long looking for you when you aren't immediately evident. Soon after it arrives, it moves on, taking that horrific psychic growling with it. You breathe a sigh of relief when you're just back to whispers and smooth jazz. But by the time you feel brave enough to exit your hiding place, Amelia Earhart is sadly long gone. 
you had so many interesting historical questions for her too. Instead, you just keep walking, because that's what you've learned to do in the back rooms. At least, the locale here is a little more visually stimulating than the other levels you've been trapped in. You look up at the portraits on the walls and notice something eerie. They're all smiling now, with wide, toothy grins. You remember reading back in high school why people never smiled for these old portraits. The painting process could take hours on end, so it's always best to let your face assume a relaxed position. Big smiles on portraits this old seem to be profoundly unnatural. Oh, I wouldn't say that, old chap. I think it's nice they look so happy. Don't you? You hear that voice ring out. It's smooth, clear, classy, and refined and yet seems to have an undertone of almost limitless malice, like a pleasant well-groomed <laughs> pond atop a lava-spewing volcano. You turn towards the voice and see its origin. A man, well, kind of, standing in the hall about ten feet away from you. He's wearing a fine suit, but one thing seems off about him. Maybe it's his vibe, his cadence, or the fact he appears to have a green cuttlefish for a head. Before you can formulate a joke about how you must have accidentally wandered into the Hasbin Hotel and are now standing face to face with Wish.com's Alistair the Radio Demon, the mysterious cuttlefish headed man speaks up again. I'm the proprietor of this hotel, you see. I take great pride in knowing that it's running smoothly at all times. But you see, it's a hard job for just one man, even as hard as a worker as I. Would you consider becoming a business partner of mine in the hotel business in exchange for equity and other benefits? It's been a surreal day. You've been hustled for Slim Jims by a talking cat who can predict the future, saved from a pipe cleaner monster by Amelia Earhart, and it now seemed like you're being roped into an MLM by Davy Jones' Sigma male grindset cousin. Maybe it would be a good idea to just settle down and get into the hotel business on level 5. A bit of stability would certainly be nice, wouldn't it? The stranger seems to sense you're mulling it over and moves in for the kill. How about you come back to my office and we'll get the papers drawn up, eh? I'll give you an incredible deal. Deal. That word. Suddenly, everything clicks into place. You remember Samantha's prophecy. You're going to be offered a deal by something extremely dangerous. The paper from the table in the Beverly room also flashes back to you. Beware the beast. That's when you have your usual suspects moment and it all clicks together. This is not a legitimate business partner. Oh no. This budget bill cipher is actually the beast of level 5. The most dangerous entity on the entire level and you need to get out of there. Now. You turn and run at full speed, not caring about anything else. You can still hear the fish face freak calling out, You're missing out on the deal of a lifetime! Behind you. But you're not interested in playing any of his squid games. All you need is to get the hell out of there and find a safe zone. You run past death moths, death rats, and even hounds on your way out. But you'd rather deal with them than make a deal with the beast. Cause this is one Mr. Beast who won't give you money. He'll only give you pain and suffering. You find your way to a heavy iron door marked maintenance and run into the room behind it. This is how you discover the third and final section of level 5, the boiler room. Filled with vintage boiler technology and pipes, it makes you feel oddly nostalgic for the many pipes that infested prior levels. It feels like coming back home after a long period of staying in, well, a hotel. There's also a familiar nutty smell coming from the liquid dripping out of a nearby cracked pipe. You take a sip and find, to your immense relief, that it's almond water. The pipes are filled with delicious, rejuvenating almond water. You drink your fill and fill a canteen, then walk deeper into the boiler room. The deeper you go, the hotter it gets, but suddenly, there's a light in the distance. You brave the heat, panting and sweating from the intensity until finally, you reach the light. Things will never be the same again after that. Now go check out the next level, Level 6 Lights Out, for more information on surviving this uniquely terrifying place.